Okay, so I'm a little sick. I'm a little sick. I have a little cough thing going on, and I feel very. I know you. You know, I just. I'm just a little. I have. I. I don't think it's a flu or anything. I'm just. I just have quite an intense cold, so that sucks. Shit. <laughs> uh, pardon. <laughs> anyway. Um, I tried to talk about something very intense and important, but the video was very all over the place. Sorry. Um, and very, um, up close. And <laughs> I'm so thick. So I don't think that's a very nice way to bring this topic, because it's quite important, and I don't think it's a very nice thing to be like, Hi, gender dysphoria is not what makes a trans, because I have an experience that completely challenges that idea. And, uh, I'm gonna tell you why. <laughs> okay, so, I don't know what it's called necessarily, but it's so possible to have gender dysphoria without being trans. And um, I'm going to tell you why. I identified as non-binary for a really long time. Like two years, I think. I mean, for some people that's not a long time, but for me, in, as a 18-year-old, that's a long time. Because that means when I started identifying with it, it was I was like 16. And before that, I had like an entire year of questioning my gender and thinking, oh, I'm this thing or I'm that thing. So in total, I'm like, I identified with, well, I started identifying as when I was 17-ish, around this time, last year, I started to kind of question whether or not non-binary was really my thing, because it wasn't. Um, I think I was, okay, so two years, let's say two years, because from 15 to 17, somewhere around that period, I identified as non-binary for almost two years solid, and uh, a year, like, uh, not a year prior, but, like, half a year prior to that, I was questioning a lot. Um, and I want to say that I do identify as a girl right now, but I do really, really, really think that gender is, like, a, it's not, it's not a... It's not like, um, well, you're one thing and you're only that thing. I don't really believe that gender is like that. So I think that I am a girl, but there's so much more to gender in general. So I don't think I'm like a girl and nothing else. I just think I'm on the f f female f female side of the, of the gender spectrum. Um, I don't know where. <laughs> But I do believe I am cisgender because, you know, it will be kind of be like, and I'm trans, so I'm not trans, I'm female, I'm cisgender. But, um, I did identify as non-binary for a really long time and I didn't, I actually experienced gender dysphoria for a really long time and I still kind of do. Um, less intensely so because I kind of know why <laughs> and I don't. I sometimes I still have these periods where I intensely hate being a girl and being seen as a girl and I don't want it and I hate it so much. Um, but those periods are sm shorter and I kind of get through them because I know what the fuck it means. <laughs> and that helps a lot. So basically I experienced gender dysphoria for a really long time. So that's what's the bird. For a really long time. Because I have been... Uh, I have sexually, I've been sexually abused by family members before, and, um, well, when you're that young, I was like 10 when it happened, and it was 15 when it ended, and I started identifying as non-binary when I was 15, so, because of that period where I was just, like, completely abused and manipulated and, well, used because I was a girl and because I had this physique and because... I, well, I was a girl, basically, um, that, that's how I saw it anyway, because my brother didn't get abused like this, because he was a boy, obviously, <laughs> um, so, uh, because all this happened, and I associated with because I was a girl, I stopped identifying as a girl, and I felt very uncomfortable with it, because it became a trigger to this intense trauma that I have experienced, because it was like, most of my adolescent and late childhood 
so that's intense <laughs> it's five years okay think about five years that's a long fucking time um i'm still so glad that anything that i'm still alive and everything stopped happening obviously um but i think that me identifying as no minor for a really long time is actually just a symptom of that like you want to cope with it you don't want to deal with it you want to cope with feeling terrible about things so you start avoiding the things that make you feel terrible and be for me that one of those things was being a girl <laughs> so i'm not saying that being trans is just fake and being non-binary is just fake and everybody who identifies as a minority is just trying to cope with their childhood trauma that's absolutely what i'm saying and i'm also not saying that just because you have a childhood trauma and you identify as trans that is because of that trauma just for me Personally, the only reason I ever identified anything with female is because I was abused and I associate those things with being a girl. <coughs> so, um, also I don't want you to think that I just think that anyone can be whoever. Uh, I think anyone could be their selves and be themselves and be their true selves. So if that means that you are, for example, trans without having intense dysphoria or if any dysphoria at all, good for you i think if you can um acknowledge who you are and no matter what other people think of that i think that's great and i don't want to say i don't want to condemn anything because i think it's great um however and i don't see the problem with people who are 13 uh kind of experiencing things and trying to identify as trans just to find out that it's not their thing i've had um people who were as young as 13, um, kind of fumbling around with gender and sexuality a little bit, and that's totally fine, they're 13, that's the reason you're 13, you're trying to find yourself, that's so fucking normal, and because we're normalizing being trans and trans experience and being gay and gay experiences, it's so normal that people are going to question their shit, and that's so okay, and people should stop being like, Oh my god, the transgender is because, like, teenagers are gonna do this, and it's okay, and it's cool. And just because I had a negative experience with gender, just because some people have very negative experiences with gender because being trans is not a fun thing. Being trans can be a horrible thing to go through because people don't accept you, you have terrible anxiety about things, you have terrible dysphoria about things. It's not fun, obviously. But I don't think it's fair to be like gatekeeping to younger people because you don't think they're really trans because they didn't experience these kinds of dysphorias. I don't know. It's kind of, it's rude. It's rude. It's plain rude. Just, just don't. <laughs> just because your experience is way worse than this person's experience doesn't mean that their experience is completely invalid and you have to make it worse by bullying them. I don't think that's fair. So, um, that's what this video is about just why you can be dysphoric and not be trans and why you can be trans without being dysphoric it's like they're two separate things and they often go hand in hand but they don't have to and we have to keep considering this otherwise we cannot help people there's a loads of trans people who have who are done transitioning who never experienced gender dysphoria ever again doesn't make doesn't that they don't stop being trans <laughs> that's not how that works so yeah my hand is getting really tired, so I'm gonna wrap this video up here. I hope you enjoyed this video. I don't know if that's a thing. Um, and yeah, be yourself. Be yourselves. I'm. I think it's so important to just be yourselves, and no matter what the fuck that is. So um, yeah. <laughs> Goodbye.